Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you joined us this afternoon as we continue to bring you all the educational uh, content we possibly can. Today we're going to talk about uh, range-bound markets. We've been in a little bit of a summertime mode when it comes to the overall market over the past few weeks as we head into August. A lot of things are stuck in range. So we're going to touch a little bit on today how to trade range-bound markets as a whole, but more specifically maybe stocks that are stuck in in range. Let's bring in Neil and Sean and we'll start talking guys about uh, range bound markets but specifically uh, range bound stocks and and you know prior videos we've touched on a few stocks that you know typically don't really do a lot when it comes to daily moves right. uh, but do give you lots of great opportunities. Yeah, this is a great time to be talking about it too because you, the, the market aspect of it does matter here because, you know, we've had uh, recently uh, with COVID uh, a lot of the tech high flyers with the S&P uh, until recently lagging uh, behind a little bit. And that meant you had some sideways action uh, on some of uh, like cyclical stocks, uh, for lack of a better word. And uh, I just want to use an example that we noticed here. I'm going to talk about a cheap name here. Uh, Macy's uh, did a bit of a bottom at $6. But just looking at the daily chart and starting uh, right when it had this little cross back over it, dip below uh, the 50 period moving average right at the end of June. And when it came back, you then had a two week, just actually, well, over, it was like a, a, almost a multi-week uh, a bottom at 635. But for a couple of weeks there, every single day, there was a test of the 635 price. Uh, and then it bounced at that price, giving you at some point a 10% move to the upside, usually to like 680 or 7 even uh, to the top. I think identifying a range like that is, is the first thing. Uh, are you looking at a range that's being made intraday? Are you looking at a day, uh, on the daily chart to see, hey, uh, over the fast past few sessions, uh, we have a hard bottom, hard top that we can take advantage of and then trade accordingly? Because once you notice this trade, what you're essentially going to be doing and, uh, is you're going to be you know, hopping into your daily chart. And of course, this is going to be today's action. It's not going to matter. But presume we we're talking about that 635 there. You know, if it actually had opened at the top end of the range, you would just be simply waiting around uh, to maybe bid at the bottom with a very, very tight stop. Uh, you know, wait patiently. You can't jump in too early. And then just look for the retracement. You wouldn't necessarily even be taking it out when it goes, you know, 10, 15 cents if you're looking for 50 to 60, which is what it was giving you on that range bound trade. So first things first, identify on a time frame uh, a range that you want to play. Uh, it'll give you an out a lot of times. And then uh, your entry, you just got to be very, very patient. If you're making that trade, Look, jumping in too early, uh, not having a, not having an out. Those are the two things that are going to get you absolutely crushed. Because you play, if you buy in the middle, uh, your upside is equal to your downside. And how often do you have the perfect exit? Uh, if it's one to one, you basically have to get out at exactly the right time. Because when your stop hits, you're getting that or worse, 100% of the time, guys. Uh, exactly, and that's a daily look at that. And what we're talking about here is stocks breaking out, uh, range-bound stocks, how to trade them, right? And so I, I think it's very important that you look also at how the stock has moved previously and what to expect. I mean, I have a stock here, Netflix. Uh, this is normally a pretty big mover. You can see here, uh, range bound. This, this, is a, this is a big chart here. I have a five minute chart up right now. So uh, Netflix can move, man. I mean, five, 10 top, 466 bottom again. Eh, that's, you know, seven, eight percent on that one. If we just make this a little smaller, we'll have three days here. And what I want to look at again was a lot of traders say, how do I know if this stock is going to break out? Out. Look, we don't really know, but what I like to do is you take a little bit of a longer time frame. So today it's the 12th. We go back to the 9th or to the 7th, uh, including the weekends. And right here, uh, you're stuck 482. Uh, so we could trade two days and you say, well, I'm looking to short Netflix or possibly even go long on a break. Where would I go on this? It's pretty range bound here. This is $5 of Netflix. That's nothing. That's a 1% move the last couple days. Even in here, it's pretty tight, right? So what you're looking for is you get a bottom right here, 482 made on this day uh, back on the 10th. Bounced a couple times there. Bounce, bounce. Then opens lower. Okay, that's the key thing. It opens lower. Now, once you can cover this gap, so basically, and it's not that much lower. It's 480 uh, to 482, 483. So it's three or four dollars there. When it opens, if it can close that gap, which it tried to do right here, it got back to 482, but did not break higher. This is another spot. If you're looking to short Netflix, this is where you would have done it because it comes to the close of that day 
and immediately turns right around to drop. Look, the range on the whole day is three or four dollars. This one little move here hits that bottom, then retraces all the way back. That's four, let's call it 483, all the way back to VWAP down here at 478. So that's a five dollar move off this closing level. So if you're gonna trade range bound stocks, I suggest Open the chart up a little bigger, do a little larger time frames here, and you'll be able to pick tops and bottoms, and then just use those as your kill spots. It's either a go spot, if you're looking long here in Netflix at 482, 483, you go, and if you're looking to fade it, then this is a spot that you short into, and look, you get rewarded, not only here, but also right here again, uh, rewarded twice. So Netflix, little range bound here, just to give you one that's not as longer term. This is three or four days, but if you break down the chart, Brendan, you could definitely see some trading opportunities. Yeah, no, it's a great point, and, and it's, it it goes to show that you don't have to look at lower priced stocks like you know something that's below five dollars trading in a four or five cent range you can look at a netflix you can look at an apple even uh, if it starts to get into a really really slow kind of grindy range but again, I want to kind of combine two things that uh, Neil said with something that Sean said here. Uh, you have to be patient. So guys, let's talk a little bit about using price alerts. So obviously, uh, there's a time to be aggressive. There's a time to cross the spread and remove liquidity. And there's a time to be patient and wait for those levels to come. So uh, let's talk about having alerts out there at key levels, as you said, Sean, uh, being prepared to enter uh, passively instead of being aggressive uh, when those prices do come into play perfect yeah i mean like you talk about passive and aggressive i think uh you know for, for an example of a range bound trade to give you both of those uh, i'm going to use one today that's not my proudest moment that i'm missing out on an nbax move and i you know i'm not going to do it justice if i don't show you uh the previous session so you know yesterday uh you had nbax off of 170 at the open this is the key thing uh, it was already trending to the downside. And then right at the open, it tested back up to uh, the first previous uh, support level here at $1.70 and then fell $30. You know, fast forward to today, uh, when it basically does almost the same thing, the only difference being is it never gave you that actual jump up. Uh, in the morning and that's that's what sort of tricked me here is it doesn't give you that jump up that you're looking for to be passive and if you're if you're sitting at the top end of the range you actually would have been waiting for 150 if you thought it was gonna do the same thing as yesterday uh, that's what I would have liked and you're asking yourself look I'm gonna sit there maybe at 149 or so risking a dollar uh, trading that range it goes up and then I'm gonna sell into it thinking I'm gonna get a break of the range to the bottom the other way that you can approach it of course is I'm only going to short it when it takes out the low. That would have worked on both days. It's just worth noting when it does that break here at 145, you can either immediately get out for a $3 winner because it comes right back, or you have to have some sort of out on the way back in. In this case, I would say it's to that 150. So that break to the downside, whether it's an opening range break or pre-market level break, if that's the range you're trading, understand that a lot of times uh, your risk on the way back, if you're wrong, is that next level to the upside so if you have an alert at that break price or a stop order to trigger you in you should also already have your out in mind you shouldn't just get into the trade uh, when you've had all the time to assess that range and have no idea where you're getting out you know in advance i might be risking five dollars on this trade so if you don't see five dollars worth of upside maybe don't take it this just happens to be an example where that was true another forty dollar move to the downside because nbax is getting crushed NVAX. Yeah, and again, that's another point. Uh, watch out for the stocks that are in play, uh, like NVAX there today uh, on some virus news. And I'm going to use go right back, Brendan, to the exact example that I used the first time, and that's Netflix. Because you asked about passive versus aggressive versus removing liquidity, adding liquidity, when to get aggressive, when to let the trade come into you rather than being the aggressor. And I, I just zoomed in. It's the same five minutes uh, just to give you guys another look. Here's that 483 that we were just talking about, right? If, if you're going to use this as a level my suggestion is stocks don't always retrace right back to the exact level that you want there's no doubt about that they do not do that so in this situation you know it doesn't come exactly to 482 60 or whatever this bottom is it comes to 482 50 so again i talk about the 50s as a level i would use those again so if you're going to short in front of this bottom you know what you got to give it to at least 483 even though that's not the ultimate bottom which means it's time to get the best price. And what I would do is when you see these candles coming to the upside and you know it's approaching the 483 that you like to short, 
go short, like go short some shares at 481. Why? Because we've topped out there. So you may not get it again. And you'd hate, you'd hate yourself if the 483 was your target. It comes to 481, then drops $4, right? So take some shares there, then take some again at 482, right? And then maybe again, if you're lucky enough to get this wick at 4250. Use the even cent levels, like I talked about, the 50s and the O's to get your position. And that way, when this is starting to move upside, you're able to get some short here and then get some short and you have a nice little average price uh, somewhere up, up high. If you wait for the ultimate level, you may miss it. And then what you can do is, if you notice that, uh-oh, it's crashing down, like on this candle and you don't have enough shares, then that's when I would say you can put a limit order to make sure that when this crashes below 480 you get the shares that you need so uh, for me two ways to do it build your position into the kill spot there the level that you're looking at that way you have the shares when it gets there and then if you miss it Mark it in, or I mean, on Netflix, you don't want to mark it in, but on a stock that has a decent spread, get your shares when it does crack that extra dollar lower. So I would say there's a lot of value to averaging into a position, but just make sure that you are aggressive getting the shares if you miss out on those ultimate entry points. I love that idea, having that uh, ultimate level that you're looking at and working into a position in front of that level. Uh, giving you a very, very easy out. Obviously, if that level becomes breached, then you're wrong. You have to get out of the trade. However, a little bit of math required there. So do look into that a little bit further, guys. Uh, you want your average price, obviously, to be as close to that key level as possible. So sizing does matter when it comes to uh, averaging into a position like that in front of uh, a key level. A little bit of look uh, there, guys, on range-bound markets, how we can profit from kind of slower-moving range-bound markets. Hope you learned something there. Uh, let's go to Valeria. Hey, Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.